I have the two images open here in the bridge. We're going to take a look at these in Photoshop. I'm going to go ahead and select both of them. I'll hold my shift key down and select both and do a command R, control R on the PC to open them up in Photoshop in Adobe Camera Raw. Now we see in this photograph we did a really pretty good job right out of the gate with the lighting but in reproduction this black shoe next to the white shoe may have a harder time. It, the black is going to suck up a little more detail on either the printed page. Um, a lot of times when it goes into the sRGB color space for the web it's going to get a little darker. So we want to make sure that we have good information here. I also have an image that we did with the color checker passport which I'd like to show you how we can decide if we wanted to warm or cool down the colors. I'm going to go ahead and select all so both of these are selected and if I look at the numbers here as I hold my cursor over the gray spot uh, I can see that 180, 180, 181, I mean we already did the custom white balance so we are very much right on the money with the color but we can actually warm up the colors. If we use our color picker and say I want to use instead of a neutral color I'm going to use a cooler color. Click here you will see the color go to a much cooler. It will actually warm up the thing. If I try to make a bluer patch neutral it warms up the shot. You can see how much there's a lot more red in it now. If I did the opposite of that and clicked one of the warmer colors it's going to cool down the shot. So you have these different patches that you can click on depending on which color is good for you visually. I want accurate color so we're going to use the neutral color here. Um, looking back at the actual photograph I think we're pretty good. The numbers really look good right out of the gate. We Because we're going to go right to uh, right to the profile here, first we should actually do that first, is do the prepare the image for processing by going to that profile that we created. That puts our color in and I always do the white balance. You can see the colors jump right in here a little bit on the, on the uh, if we go back to the, uh, to the standard ACR you can see how these colors right here have jumped a little bit. Um, so uh, we can actually go to the Adobe Standard is actually a very good one as well but I'm going to use the custom one that we've created and we can see the numbers are pretty hard but we've selected both images so whatever we're doing here is going to apply to both images. Uh, we want to go back to our first, our first uh, uh, tab here and I'm thinking we might just fill in just a little bit on the, on the fill so that helps us work a little bit on that darker shoe. I always add a little bit of clarity, just a little touch of vibrance, uh, and that's pretty good. Double check our sharpening. We're still set from before. So I think we're all set. Let's go ahead and we want to pretty much just open um, this one here. And I like the look of the shoe. You can see it's gotten a little more contrasty right in here. We're going to process that. I'm going to bring that back just a little bit. A little more fill and a little bit less contrast. Now that I see that, I'm liking what's going on in the white and the gray, the white shoe and the grayish shoe, but the black shoe is too dark. So let's go ahead now and first open this image up. And the first thing I want to do is save this image. So I'm going to go File, um, Save As. We'll just leave the name the same for now. And we're going to save that over to the desktop. as a PSD file. The reason why is I'm going to go back to the bridge and open and uh, just open this one image. We'll do Command R or Command O. We can either one, but Command R opens us up in the uh, camera raw dialog box inside the bridge. Now this is the way we had processed the first time. I'm now going to br disregard the rest of the shot and only look at that black shoe and I'm going to bring up my first of all my exposure a bunch here and I'm going to bring in a little more fill light and I'm only looking at this part of the shoe I'm not looking at this and this obviously is way overexposed but that is what it's going to take in order for us to get a good relationship of the black shoe to the white shoe on the same page we're going to need to overcompensate just a little bit. I can see that I have a lot more detail and I can see there's more detail in here and here of these the other two shoes in the dark areas. So with that in mind we'll open this shot up as a second image and let's go ahead and close the, the bridge.
bridge out of our way. Now that we have both images open, I'm going to make them both so we can see them both at the same time or reduce them down. And we can see here that we have the normal shot, which looks good for the gray and the white, but we have this lighter shot of the black shoe. Now, if I take my move tool and drag this image over and let it go, it just lands wherever we put it. That's not what we want to do. If I add the shift key, because these two images are exactly the same size as an 8-bit file, they're 60.2 megs. If I take this image here, hold my shift key down and drag and just let it go anywhere in the shot, watch what happens. It perfectly registers itself on top of the other shot. So we have in our layers panel, we can see here that we have, if we turn that off, we have the uh, original shot and then we have the bright shot. We can go ahead and close this one off now. We don't need that. And let's work with this one here. Now the first thing I want to do is I want to add a layer mask to this to block it off. Now if I just click the layer mask icon, I get a white layer mask which reveals all. I like to think of it as white reveals and black conceals. Well, let's not do that. That's too many steps. If we hold down the Option key or Alt on the PC and click the new layer mask icon, we will get a new layer mask and it will automatically fill with black, which basically hides the rest of the image because we only want to paint in a certain amount of that image. So with that in mind, we are on, make sure that we're actually on the mask. You know, you, you see the little, little block around it. We can see that when we're on the photograph, there's a little block around that. There's also uh, the link that links the, the mask and the image together. But we want to be actually on the actual mask itself. We've got that selected. So now when we paint with a white brush, we will be revealing that secondary brighter shot on top of the original shot. So I'm going to pick a paintbrush and we're going to use my right and left bracket key to I'm use my left bracket key to make it smaller. We use our right and left bracket key to make it smaller. And we also see that it's a very soft brush. I'm going to use a full opacity but a very low flow, meaning that maximum amount of ink, and this, if you think of this as an airbrush, think of it as maximum amount of ink can flow out with the opacity, but the flow constricts the nozzle to let just a little bit come out at a time. So how much, this maximum ink will come out if we hold it down, but lower how fast it comes out. So I'm going to put it down to about like 10. We don't need this open. We'll make sure we're on the mass. I'll close that off. Now we can see here as we uh, paint with normal and a flow, as I start painting in here, I am bringing in the brighter photograph. Let's go ahead and move that up a little, little faster, just so it happens faster. You can see as, I'll, it won't see it a lot until I actually turn that on and off, but as I'm bringing this image in, it's going to get those numbers up to a much, much brighter number. If I need to see exactly what I've got, I can always go right to my layers pa panel, close off the image, and I can see the, ex the shoe and see exactly where I'm bringing it in. Sometimes I like to turn off the other layer just so I can kind of just see when I'm the area that I'm working on. I'll bring up the other shot here. And we can see, let's go ahead and pull the layers panel out for a second and we'll get that out of our way. And as you can see, as I, it doesn't look like it did a lot, but as I turn that layer on and off, you can see how we now have a lot more detail in that area. I'm going to make sure that we have a good bit down in here. If I need to, I can open up the uh, darker areas of this shoe and the darker areas of this shoe just a little bit to make that look like if we come in closer, we can see that we are going to get a little bit more detail in here as we need to. Now that's going to lose a lot when we go into reproduction, so we want to just overcompensate it just a little bit. You can see here I'm bringing that in. The more I bring that in, the more detail I have down in that shoe, especially down in here where the laces are in the deeper shadow areas. So I feel that it is better to replace improperly exposed pixels with 
brighter, in this case they were darker, with, with the proper exposure than it is to go in and burn and dodge and do other things. This is my first choice. Even more than my screen and multiply techniques that we can use to brighten and darken things, I really like being able to process the image a number of different ways. You can really see it now as we turn that on and off, especially even in this area. Watch, you can see how as we turn that layer on and off, we have a lot more information on that photograph. So when that actually comes down to uh, the final shot, let me go ahead and just put a crop on that. I'll hit my C for my crop tool. And we're going to crop off my hand above there a little bit and just come down in here. And that gives us our finished image. M even though we have a medium, a very light, and a very dark material, they're all looking very natural in the photograph and they're going to have the right kind of numbers. If we bring up our tools for a second, look at our info palette. Let's pull that out for a second and we'll work so we can see better. And as I hold over here, we can see that we're reading 44s, 45s, you know, we're getting plenty of information. There's no place in here where we're down in the teens, which would mean that these numbers, except for maybe right in here, this area is never really going to be that much detail in it. We're seeing 9 or 10 in here, but all the other black areas, we're well above 30s and 40s, which means we're going to have a lot of uh, information when this goes into a final CMYK conversion and goes into a catalog we are going to be able to have as much detail as possible and give less work to the people on the press to get these uh, to get that definition into those dark shadow areas